or mature adults who've chosen to join us today. Uh, welcome to our attempt to bring a little dose of the familiar back into your lives. Uh, I want to thank in particular Dave and Laura Land for taking the initiative to make this happen. Thank you both. And as most of you know, um, I've been leading us through a study in Romans, but I'm going to suspend that. Uh, 15 minutes just isn't enough time to cover a passage in Romans. Uh, what we need to focus on instead is our current situation with this pandemic. What we are experiencing now is unprecedented. As mature adults, we have lived through some monumental cultural change in our lifetimes, uh, from the cultural changes of the 60s uh, right up to the technology changes of recent years. Um, and now this. And when, you know, when all the other changes took place, we had a choice. We could either join the change or we could retreat from the change. Uh, if you didn't like what was going on, it wasn't all that hard to find like-minded people who agreed with you and you could insulate yourself from the change or, or at least delay having to buy into the change. Um, but that's not the case with this pandemic. Now, like it or not, we're impacted by it. We're all impacted by it. Pauline and I have more than one friend at Rancho, um, including one couple from Encouragers who've lost a loved one in just the past week or two. How do you grieve a loss like that? Funerals are delayed. You can't travel. You can't be with family. How do you do something as grieving a loss in times like this? Uh, I've got my first great granddaughter on the way. Yes, that's an announcement. Um, but because my granddaughter lives in Minnesota, by the way, I think I said granddaughter on the way. I don't know if it's a granddaughter or a grandson. My first great great grandchild is on the way. Got to clarify that. But because my granddaughter lives in Minnesota, who knows when I'll be able to hold that baby or give my granddaughter a hug. Uh, I've got a grandson in Minnesota who's set to graduate in two months, but who knows if he'll even have a graduation. And frankly, I'm pretty certain that I won't be able to travel there and celebrate with him and personally look him in the eye and tell him how proud I am of him. I don't even have a choice and that hurts. And I know that I'm not alone. The impact is monumental. Uh, the change is staggering. So how do we respond? How do we move forward? Uh, when uh, I last taught in Romans, uh, we got to the end of chapter eight where Paul says that even in the face of trouble and hardship, we are more than conquerors. Well, to be a conqueror, we all have some hard decisions to make, and um, I'm not necessarily the one to help you with all those decisions, but I do know where you need to start. Over the years, I've taught uh, with encouragers through books of the Bible. I've taught on key chapters of God's word. We've taught on a variety of topics. But through it all, I've always focused on big ideas, uh, both the big idea of the passage that we're studying and how it relates to the big ideas of God. And I can't think of a better place to start than those big ideas. After all, it's exactly what Jesus taught us to do. Now, I'm just going to take a moment here and uh, show you my uh, slide deck. In Matthew 23, uh, Jesus was confronting the Pharisees, the religious leaders, and he went after them hard. But in verse 23, he said, you hypocrites, you give a tenth of your spices for mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, things like mercy and justice and faithfulness. And here's the point, you should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. They were so focused on doing what they believed they should do, even minutia like calculating the tithe on herbs that they had neglected the more important matters of the law, literally the greater parts of the law, or we could say the weightier parts of the law, which is what I call 
God's big ideas. Jesus is telling them that before they decide what they should do, they need to step back and look at the bigger picture by starting with God's big ideas. I believe that's exactly what we have to do. Not just all the time, every day, but especially when faced with something as life-changing as this pandemic. Feeling a little overwhelmed, feeling frustrated or a little anxious, are you by any chance getting sucked into the minutia of coronavirus news? Uh, Jesus is saying to you and to me, never lose sight of the greater parts of the law. Always start with God's big ideas. Then you can make your decisions on the details of life. And you know why that is? Well, if you've been encouragers before, of course you do. You've heard me teach before. Every time I've taught encouragers, we've been preparing for such a day as this, because we always start with God's big ideas. And you know why we do that. Not just because Jesus said to do so, but because big ideas are all about our perspective, our paradigm. It's about how we see life. The problems we face in life are not the problem. The problem is always how we see the problem, change our perspective, change our paradigm, and often we can find a solution. Can you think of a bigger problem than how your life has been impacted or changed by this pandemic? Now, Jesus isn't telling you to ignore the situation. Conquerors don't run away and hide. But before you do what you need to do, start with the greater parts of the law. Start with God's big ideas. Start with a new paradigm, a new perspective. First, see the problem from God's point of view. I like to call it uh, thinking like God thinks. And then make all those decisions you still need to make to be a conqueror. And what are God's big ideas? What would God consider to be the greater or weightier parts of the, of the law? Can you think of a greater idea than love? God himself is love. And Jesus made it really clear that there's really only one law, the law of love. He said all the commandments hang on the law of love. Not just that God loves us, but that we are also to love others. And to love, that includes both loving one another, our brothers and sisters in Christ, and loving the lost. So we always start with the perspective of love. But I got to tell you, love is a really, really, really big idea. It's so big that it's hard to wrap your arms around it. It's hard to get a handle on it. I mean, it's even hard to define. Now, of course, God showed us love in the life of Jesus. But fortunately, God has given us other big ideas to help us understand what it means to love. Those big ideas are how God sees the world, how God thinks, how he sees life, even how God sees this pandemic. We've identified a few of those big ideas. There are others, but let's start with these. Uh, think of love as the ultimate revelation of who God is, like a pure white light coming down from heaven. And then God's word takes that pure white, brilliant light of love, and like a prism, it refracts that light. It literally explodes that light into a rainbow of colors. In this case, it's a rainbow of big ideas. The first is grace and truth. In John chapter 1, John compared his experience of Jesus to Moses' experience of God on Mount Sinai. Moses only got to see the back, just a, a glimpse of God's glory. But John got to see God's glory face to face with Jesus. And you know how he described that glory? Th three words. He said he, Jesus was full of grace and truth. Now, friends, that's a really big idea. And when you put on the lens or the glasses of grace and truth, especially when you pay attention to both grace and truth at the same time, you not only think as God thinks, 
But you see your problem, even this pandemic, in a new way. The next big idea is to do justice and love mercy and walk in humility from Micah 6, 8. Now, how do I know that's a big idea? Because that's the verse Jesus quoted in Matthew 23, calling it one of God's big ideas. And when you and I put on the lens or the glasses of justice and mercy and humility, especially when you pay attention to all three at the same time, you not only think as God thinks, but you see your problem, even this pandemic, in a new way. The next big idea is unity. That comes from John 17, where Jesus prayed for one thing, for our unity as his followers. It's also the point of the new commandment in John 13, where he told us to love one another as he loved us. And just to be clear, in John 17, Jesus said that our greatest witness to the lost is our unity and love for one another. And when you and I put on the lens or the glasses of unity, you not only think as God thinks, but you see your problem, even this pandemic, in a new way. The next big idea is hope. Pastor Scott just finished a tremendous series leading up to Easter on how hope is greater than fear. We not only have uh, the hope of an end to this pandemic, but we have a solid hope in a glorious future, no matter what the pandemic does to us. Friends, there is a tomorrow. And when you and I put on the lens or the glasses of hope, the perspective of time and a future, you not only think as God thinks, but you see your problem, even this pandemic, in a new way. The next big idea is justification by faith. That's from Romans 5.1. And this one is huge because it speaks to our entire identity of who we are. We are righteous by faith through grace and grace alone. That is our new identity. We're not just sinners saved by grace. We are righteous. And when you and I put on the lens or the glasses of our new identity of righteousness, we not only see ourselves as God sees us, but we can see our problem, even this pandemic, in a new way. But the last big idea is freedom. Paul said in Galatians 5.1 that it is for freedom that we've been set free. And then in the rest of that chapter, he goes on to explain how we're not just free from the law and trying to make ourselves acceptable to God, but we're free to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And when you and I put on the lens or the glasses of freedom in Christ, we not only think as God thinks, but you see your problem, even this pandemic, in a new way. This morning, let's take the lens of grace and truth. How does that change our paradigm, our perspective of, uh, on our current situation with this pandemic? In a recent conversation I had with uh, Justin and the uh, Rancho Youth Ministry leaders, the RIM leaders, uh, Justin had us look at Matthew 11, verses 28 to 30, and talk about what it means to us. And I got to tell you, friends, I saw grace and truth in this passage. I know I'm reading from the message. Jesus said, are you tired, worn out, uh, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Now, I know that this passage was all about the yoke and the burden of the law as laid down by the religious leaders of the day, including, unfortunately, many religious leaders of even today. The Pharisees put a 
heavy burden on people to obey a multitude of laws. But it also speaks to times in life when we're overwhelmed in other ways, like worry or fear or being anxious from this pandemic. I was drawn to a couple of phrases. Uh, the first is learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Uh, I've been at home now for five weeks. Uh, fortunately, I'm, I'm working my job from home. I'm fortunate. Uh, I've only put my keys and my wallet in my pocket to go somewhere a couple of times in five weeks. And at least I'm not commuting to L.A. four to five days a week. I've got a lot of time that's opened up for me. Life has slowed down like it hasn't slowed down since I became an adult. And I'm seeing new unforced rhythms of grace in my life. Time to think, to pray, to read, to hang out with Pauline, to see God's grace in new ways. And you know what? When life returns to normal, or whatever the new normal is like, knowing that it won't be at all like the old normal of just six weeks ago, can you believe that? I don't want to lose some of those unforced rhythms of grace. I know that the more I experience God's grace, the more I'm transformed into the likeness of Jesus. The other phrase that caught my attention was, I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Uh, I like that. You see, truth is not a bunch of laws to obey to make God happy with us. Truth starts with God's big ideas. That's how we, that's how God thinks. That's where we start our journey to find truth. That's where we'll find perspective on our problems. And here's the kicker. God's big ideas aren't this one size fits all. You are an incredibly unique person with talents and personality and needs that are totally different from everyone else. Your experience of this pandemic is totally unique from others. In your search for truth, start with the yoke of God's big ideas, and you'll discover that Jesus will fit that yoke to you and that it won't be the heavy burden you might have experienced in the past. And look how this verse ends. Jesus said, keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Friends, that's the key to surviving this pandemic and being more than a conqueror. conqueror. Keep company with Jesus. Take the time you have in this new order of life to discover new rhythms of grace and to seek truth starting with God's big ideas. And finally, think about how you can be a source of grace and truth to the family, to your family and friends, and even your neighbors. Can we take the same grace and truth that we receive from Jesus and find new ways to be a source of that grace and truth to others? Of course, all while practicing social distancing, of course. Challenging, I know. Don't just extend grace to some and truth to others. Think about specific ways that you can expand, extend grace and truth to others. You see, it's in the end that you find wisdom. And there are not a lot of things our world needs more right now than wisdom. God bless you as you survive this pandemic. Uh, God bless you as you become a conqueror over this pandemic. And God bless you as you become a source of grace and truth and wisdom to others in your life. Let's pray. Father, I pray for your blessing on each of us and our families. I ask that you would show us new ways to experience your grace and your truth. Show us how to rest from fear, worry, anxiety over this pandemic, and help us become conquerors by taking the initiative to extend grace and truth along with wisdom to family, friends, and neighbors. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, if you have feedback on this class, please send it to Dave. Uh, if you need help or if you're able to volunteer for anything, 
please, we want you to contact Laura Lynn or Kirk. Um, if you have prayer requests, now if you turn prayer requests into the uh, church, there's a team that prays for you. But if you're an encourager, keep sending those to Linda, who is very faithful about getting them out to the prayer warriors we call encouragers. Love you all. Take care. Uh, wear your mask and see you back next week. Same time, same place. Thank you.